In the last video, we talked about the first two steps in the process for conducting a community needs assessment. Identifying target audience, determining purpose, and setting goals and objectives. So this video is going to give a general overview of thinking about data collection tools to use to, to accomplish goals and objectives. So what kinds of data could you collect? There is a model that's shown in your book that's called the social ecological model. This is really a framework that's used on lots of different, uh, different, uh, different areas, including a needs assessment. And why I bring this in is because when you do a needs assessment, you really can think about multiple layers that surround an individual. So you do want to collect data from the individual, but there may be things outside in their environment uh, at different levels of the environment that are influencing the behaviors and attitudes and beliefs that they engage in. So depending on your needs assessment, there may be times when you want to understand what's happening with policy related things, what um, is happening uh, at a more local community level, um, maybe there's some things happening within the family level as well. So these are things I want you to keep in mind when you're thinking about collecting data for a needs assessment. The next thing you need to think of is how are you going to collect the data? What methods will you use? Now I've broken down different methods into two groupings. So you can get, pre, you can get some of your data for your needs assessment from pre-existing data, or you may need to collect new data. And these are just some examples of different types of data that you could collect. So pre-existing data, oftentimes you can get it through the internet, through reports or through government websites or other types of websites, or you might be able to go to an on-site facility and gain some of this information. So you could look at um, local, state, federal health department or health agency websites or reports. You might look at hospital records, census bureau, um, maybe you use Google Maps, maybe you're going to use the Code of Federal, Federal Regulations, um, which, I, which is uh, essentially outlines how programs should be carried out, like school meals or congregate meal programs, WIC, things like that. Maybe you're going to look at congress.gov, maybe there's some policies that you want to be able to see related to your needs assessment. Maybe you'll look at school district websites for information about the school itself, its size, number of students that are being served by free and reduced price lunch, which indicates the number of um, low-income families within that school district. You can look at published research studies to give you prior evidence related to your particular target audience. And, and maybe it's a broader than your, so maybe like the example school children, I was looking uh, at a school, children between 7th and ninth grade, it's a particular school, local school. Maybe there's not any published research studies on that specific school, but there could be published research study on, on children between 7th and, and uh, ninth grade that could give some background information related to my needs assessment. Maybe there's some pre-existing data sets like NHANES and you're able to see as a nation how is your target audience doing? And then that gives you some background information and then delve deeper within your particular target audience. Collecting new data can become um, quite important in, in conducting a needs assessment. So you may ask key informants. So these are people who are in the know about a topic area and, and um, can, can give you valuable information about um, by your target, your target population. So for instance, in our example of children, maybe we're going to talk to the nutrition service director at the school because they would have understanding of the, the school lunch menus. They would have understanding of what they see with what the children are selecting and, and their attitudes. Maybe they hear what the students are saying. So those could be key informants. Maybe teachers become key informants in that example as well because they're eating, uh, they're eating with the students, perhaps. If that's the case, then they might have knowledge as well. Maybe you're gonna to talk to stakeholders. So these are people or organizations with a vested interest in identifying and addressing the nutritional problem. So maybe they have, uh, because they are interested in, in that nutrition problem, maybe they even have some of other um, evidence that, that could give you insights into um, your needs assessment. 
And then probably the one that gets used most often is actually talking to the target population themselves. Now, with collecting new data, you really can use qualitative uh, and or quantitative methods. And that's where the next uh, videos are gonna talk more specifically on collecting new data that's qualitative data, collecting new data that's quantitative.